I'm Samantha going to help. And I'm John Ackley. And we filled in at the last minute this morning uh, for someone that couldn't make it. So if we are a little rough, forgive us. I um, haven't had much time to practice, but uh, we both use WordPress. I do a lot of um, WordPress design development. I do work for clients. I also uh, co-run the Pittsburgh WordPress Meetup. If you want to learn more about WordPress, you can find us on meetup.com. As well as the first Word Camp Pittsburgh, which is a conference for WordPress, which unfortunately is currently sold out. Um, Which is a good problem so that, to have. Yeah, first year we were talking about that. Um, so that's kind of what I do. And I'm a 35 year veteran of computer programming. I have been maintaining websites for over, well over 20 years. Uh, focused on WordPress about a decade ago. Well, uh, probably about five, four or five years ago, I started uh, using WordPress as the primary means of. Uh, organizing the content for websites, and uh, so yeah, we've been. Uh, uh, I also do website design and uh, custom programming, and speaking a variety of other things. So, um, so we're going to get uh, started. We'll. Uh, our format is novel because we just made it up about 20 minutes ago. Uh, so we're going to have a series of slides that introduce topics about using WordPress, hands-on stuff that you're going to do every day or at least the first few will be stuff you do initially, and then the rest of them will be stuff you do every day. Um, we're going to alternate. One is going to talk about the concepts and the uh, topic in a broad, general way, and then I'm going to we'll switch over to me, and then I'll switch from the slide to a live demo, and I'll actually do what we're talking about right on a real WordPress site, so you'll get to see it in action. So the Topics that we're going to go over. Okay, um, first we're going to talk about how to log in to your WordPress site, uh, how to access your WordPress dashboard, which is sort of behind the scenes part where everything operates. Uh, we're going to show you how to add a header image, which is how you can put your logo on your website or your blog. Configure sidebar widgets, which are these little areas that will show up in a sidebar of a page that may have menus and quotes and all sorts of other things. We'll show you how to add images to your pages and posts. Uh, we'll also talk about creating your first post, your first page, and working with post and page lists. And I guess you want to say if you have questions as we go, um, feel free to okay, take them as we go through. We just kind of point out what we're working with. Uh, I'm fine with questions as we go. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. So the first part is how do you get to your WordPress dashboard, and from any, uh, from most WordPress self-hosted sites, you can go to, you know, yourdomain.com slash wp hyphen admin, and that brings up this login box here. So, WordPress is a multi-user site that allows you to have um, many different users registered with your website. So, if you get big enough, you can actually have uh, people that log in to contribute uh, content, to write blogs, guest blogs, for instance. Um, you can uh, have people that do some administrative things for you if you uh, hire a third party to do backups and security monitoring and things like that. They can have a separate login that uh, allows them to do that. And you can manage that. We aren't going to go into depth on users, but the fact that there are multiple users requires that you have a user and a password. So. The, this initial page, and now you know I set this up as split screen. So here's what I'm going to do: I'm going to unify my screens, mirror, and then we're going to switch over to here. Now, normally we're ahead of the game here. I'm going to log out. So here's the login page. If you are um, on a Mac or something like that, you will see. Um, uh, I'm sorry, any, any browser, it doesn't have to be a Mac. Uh, you'll see uh, this when you go directly to your website, and then the, from the slide, WP add admin. You can always get to the login page for your blog with, with this additional part uh, added to your domain. So that brings you here. Um, my, I have a password manager 
for my browser so it remembers me, John, and my password. And that allows us to log in. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. I'm ready to skip back to here. Okay. And so once you log in, oh, yeah. Once you log in, that takes you to the WordPress dashboard, which was that screen just saw a minute ago, and so we'll go back to. You. And the most important part on your dashboard is this whole black column that goes down the side. We're not going to touch on each thing. Uh, but that is something you want to get familiar with what each of those menus do. Um, specifically, the appearance, headers, widgets, posts, media, and pages are the ones that we're going to cover today. This is poster up top, media, pages, and under appearance is where you're going to find your widgets and your headers. Then you have your media and your pages. Switching back to the demo. So again, you see that same line up here on the left. Now, the uh, highlighted main uh, item here in this case is dashboard, but if I click on appearance, um, it, it, re, um, it redraws itself with the appearance submenu underneath it. And that's exactly what we saw over here on this graphic. So that allows us to navigate to any of these. If you hover over something like dashboard or appearance, so if I hover over posts, I get that little submenu. It comes off to the side. And it all just depends on your browser and the version of WordPress you're using. But this is a, a pretty common thing. If you just hover over it, that also allows you to access the menu one click faster than, uh, than you might by, by opening up the um, submenu. So, any, any questions about that? That's basic navigation. Every feature that you want to control in, uh, in terms of how the website looks, the, uh, how it behaves for user activity, uh, and how, uh, how you put content in and edit that, all of that will be managed from this dashboard menu here on the left. There's a keyboard shortcut. It works. Okay. So the first thing we're going to show you is how to add a header image to your website. Um, every theme has a different setup as far as what actually is the header image. And the important thing to pay attention is this theme that we have up now, which is the default, says that your header image is 1200 by 280. So that means if you're creating your own custom graphics or having someone build something for you, want to create it to that size. WordPress will allow you to do some cropping, but if you create something that's a perfect square and you try to upload it in there, you're going to have a problem kind of getting it sized correctly. Um, so that's the, the important takeaway for the header image. You know, John's going to show you how to actually do that. So here in under appearance is the header um, item. And this left gray part looks like what we just showed on the slide. And then on the right-hand side of these customization um, set, uh, setting pages, you get a preview. So this will show you uh, kind of in real time the changes that you're making to the site. So I'm going to click Add New Image. And for our demonstration purposes, I created a few things. Blogging 201 header dot png. So we'll close that one. And if you WordPress is sensitive to drag and drop, so you can either drag it on like this, or um, you can. Which one did I use? Mm -hmm. uh, or if you click on this, you can click the select files, and that allows you to browse. So then I can go to Tonics, getting started in WordPress media, and click Logging to a one header. .png. I'm going to, you can add some information about the image, but I rarely do. It's um, uh, 
strictly optional, select and crop. So notice here that we, we now have one new image in our media library, um, one new image in the media library, and it has a check mark. So by selecting it and having that check mark visible, that's the image it's going to use to put on the header. So I'm going to select and crop. And that's what it looks like. It's the, it was the correct length and width from the beginning, so I don't have to crop it. And then I can skip cropping. And now my site looks like this. And you can actually put up multiple headers. You can try out different ones. Uh, the highlighted one is the one that you'll use, uh, that it will use. I save and publish. And if I preview the site, which we're actually getting here, but if I open up a new browser, I have to remember the IP address here. And there it is. There's our new image, header image. And then we can turn off some of these text-based uh, header things. Um, I didn't actually go into that on the slides. Why don't I do that? I can remember where it is. Um, so we'll go back to header, the header image, site identity, display site title. So okay, so under uh, appearance and site identity is the site title. You can add a um, tagline, uh, word, press, bar. Us. Uh, and then you can see the change that that makes when I add a tagline. And then I can turn that off. So that all I have now is the, the image that I uploaded as the full header. Now, the reason you have both options, kind of do a header and a simple title, some sites you'll choose one or the other. You know, if you don't have a logo, you're just getting started, you can just have your site title and your description. There are some themes that are set up where your header graphic becomes sort of a background, where you could put, you know, just a nice photo, and then you could have your site title on top of that. Um, it all depends on uh, what theme you pick. With, we could do a whole day on themes. Yeah, we sure could. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, themes in 301. So I'm going to refresh this page that's previewing the site. And you'll notice that the text at the top just disappeared because I've turned that checkbox on. So now all we have is this image that represents our full header. And that looks actually pretty professional. Now, all of a sudden, we just went from kind of some plain Jane graphic uh, text, uh, kind of branding the site, to something that looks kind of slick. I mean, I am not a graphic designer. I did sleep at Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> So that's um, adding a header image. Okay. Uh, considering your sidebar widgets. Um, sidebar widgets are an area that can be very complex. You can do a lot of things with them. Uh, out of the box, WordPress has a group of widget items that you can choose from, that you can drag and drop and add into your site. These are the widgets here. So right now, this one is set up to be showing your recent posts your recent comments, and your archives. And the search box. Yeah, and the search box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're going to show you how to set those up. However, as you learn about adding plugins and different themes, plugins can add their own special widget to it, and then you can do unlimited things in this area. Um, but that's, we're going to focus just on the, these couple here for today. Yeah. There there are really three main areas, four main areas on a, on a WordPress page. There's the header, there's the main content, which is where your blog post will be, pictures if you have a slideshow, things like that. There's the sidebar, which we're going to configure now, and then a footer area at the very bottom of the page that's also configured. But we're not going to go into that today because of uh, time, but that's those are the four main areas. In one. So when we talk about sidebar, we're talking about this area on the side that is not your main content, but it allows the visitor to your site to access parts of your site randomly uh, to get additional functionality or additional information. Uh, 
so let's go over here and look at widgets. So we're still under the appearance menu, and now we're going to go look at widgets. So on the widgets um, management page, you have this area here called the sidebar. Every little, um, every box in there represents something that will be displayed on your sidebar. And if you take those out, you, you can take them out, you can drag them around. Um, the uh, WordPress control panel is very uh, flexible. Uh, you can remove them. It, you can expand them with this little triangle on the right. And then you have options to delete them here or close them. Or if you make change, like search my site, and I can save that. Now my new... So if I go over here and refresh, I see search my site here above my search box. And it was that simple to make that small change. Um, so I can delete that. So what I'm going to do is leave recent posts. I'm going to remove comments. So I'm going to expand it and delete it. I don't really want to see archives now because it will betray the fact that I don't have any archives. So we're going to delete that for now. Categories might be useful for the moment. And meta is this crazy box. Let's go look at that. Meta has all this crazy stuff in it that nobody really ever wants to see, like, all together in one place. Some of this stuff is useful, like the site admin login and the uh, logout and the various RSSs and the pointer back to WordPress.org, which happily uh, provides a free uh, blogging platform for the entire world to use, but they have to fund their operations, so they, they get a lot of traffic back by having these links and um, uh, getting people to exercise. So Meta is really a box that you want to turn off every time. You ever leave Meta on? Yeah, I think so. So we'll turn Meta off. You can add all the any one of those features in Meta. You can put back in in other ways, but we'll just we'll just kill the whole thing for now. So uh, now I'll go back and we'll refresh the page, and all we have is search, recent posts, and categories. And um, that's pretty much it. Let's add one just to say that we did calendar. Is that a good one? That will. That's probably the best one that's available by. Oh, tag cloud. Tag cloud's fun. We don't really have any tags though. Let's do calendar because it's the most obvious one. We'll do it right above recent posts. Okay. We'll just go look. Fresh. Just by adding that, now we have a clickable calendar, which will bring up, uh, if you click on the, uh, any of the links that are active, it will bring up the page for the, all of the posts that were posted that day on, from the calendar. It's not particularly useful, but if it's an example of one of the widgets you can add, and you just saw how easily it was to add it, you know, literally drag it and drop it onto the sidebar. So, okay. Um, yeah, come back. I want to mention a little thing. Yes. Okay. So oh, yeah. There's another text really area or a widget called text, and this just gives you a blank box that you can put whatever you want in. Uh, sometimes people will actually just type straight text there. You want to put something in your side where you can type it out. You can also put HTML code in there. Um, so sometimes if you're trying to add something, um, like I've done it for a PayPal button. You know, if you're working with a nonprofit that's doing donations through PayPal, PayPal will give you this chunk of code, and it will say, it's somewhere on your site, and you can put that in the sidebar. Um, sometimes I've seen conferences like this will send out uh, code snippets to say, you know, if you're attending PodCamp, you know, put this graphic on your site to promote it. And they'll send you a bit of text, and you can just copy and paste that right in there. Um, so that's something that you need careful what kind of code you put in there, um, you know, Melissa's code, stuff like that, make sure you know what you're pasting, but if you know HTML, you know, you've got more than HTML, you know, basic full text, italic, you know, H2, you can write some text in there. Yeah, so you saw, well, I, I typed a very tiny little one in while um, Melissa was talking, and here we have, so the plain text, you can put in plain text, you don't have to um, format it, you don't have to know any markup or coding or anything like that. But 
if we do, then you can do fancier things like here is a little HTML. Here's a header. It's an H2. It's like a sub uh, a subheading for HTML markup. Okay, great. On that side, can yes. you pick the way, like say you want the plain text towards the bottom of the column, can you arrange that? Or is it good if you want the calendar at the top? Yes. It's real simple to watch. Calendar at the top. So make sure you hover over it and get that little moving icon. Drag it okay. above the text. Refresh. Well, yeah, it's really that. They've made it very, very easy. Good question. Thank you. All right. Who doesn't love coffee? 
So we've just added a bunch. You saw how easy that was. I just drag them from the finder. You, uh, by selecting files, you can do the same thing here. Um, which ones don't I have? Here we go. I have a bunch of screenshots. So I will add tick. So it's just that easy. And then there's tick. So now, if we, oh, fish jumping exceeds the maximum upload size for this site. Ha, I missed that because I was busy dragging things. So there, there we have a two meg, megabyte limit. That file, just as Melinda said, that file exceeded the upload limit. So we're not going to see the funny goldfish jumping into the bigger bowl. Yeah, there's really no need for images to be anywhere near two megs or larger. No. That's true. Sometimes where you run into that is you can also upload files to your media library. If you have PDFs that you want someone to download, uh, you write up Word document, things like that, you upload them the same way. That's where sometimes I run into issues where, you know, a client wants to put a large PDF on there. You kind of have to talk them into, you know, making it smaller or storing it somewhere else and linking to it. Um, the bigger the file you put in WordPress, the more resources it's going to use and the more it's going to bog your site down. Yeah, and that brings up another topic. Uh, PDFs have questionable SEO right? so searchable. They're, it's questionable how well they can be searched. Uh, some of them can be searched pretty well, but um, uh, I kind of try to scare clients away from using PDFs on sites. I've got one client right now that's like all their case studies are in PDFs. It's like, I think we're going to make these as separate pages just because it's... Even outside of SEO, which yeah. is super important. I always say that PDFs are not mobile friendly. You know, there's stats that we're That's doing true. so much consumption of content on our phones, and it, it's too hard to scroll through a PDF and read and save and talk your head. The only time I like to use PDFs is when it's something that somebody has to do something with. Um, you know, if you need somebody to fill out a form and save it and return it to you, or print out a form and mail it with your check, you know, little data, but okay. Um, you know, those kind of points, yes, but certainly case studies, content, you know, even if you have a magazine article, you know, instead of repurpose the content being made in WordPress text, it's much easier to read. Excellent. Excellent. Would you suggest, um, I'm just thinking I'm in the midst of creating an annual report and it's like 15 pages long. Um, would you suggest images maybe instead or doing like a slideshow kind of thing that they can view on the website for um, mobile access? I think it depends on your audience. So okay. I've done some annual reports with nonprofits where they do want you to be able to download it. And sometimes you just go ahead and do it. Yeah. But if it's a great article that you wrote in that annual report featuring a donor, mm -hmm. I would suggest turning that into a blog post. Okay. You know, putting out a page. Um, the other note, just in case you're new to this, that I've run into, um, a lot of times when you put an annual report online, you'll want to strip out the donor list mm -hmm. because there's some privacy right. issues around can you publish that or not. Yeah, yep. that's a really good point. We, uh, there are also ways to use uh, single source uh, and then have it rendered in multiple ways. So if you, there are some tools. I use a tool called Scrivener for a lot of the work I do. That allows you to create HTML versions of your content, PDF versions of your content. You can output it to Word for further, um, uh, Microsoft Word for further editing. Uh, and then you have all your original source code content, uh, original uh, files uh, and images uh, in a way that you know, you, if you need to go back and make a change, you, all you have to do is re-render the three or four different things instead of having four or five different Original sources. Okay. So it's just a, an option. What was that called? Scrivener. Scrivener. Yeah. Thanks. With a V, Scrivener. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. That's images. Okay. So now, now, okay, so now we're going to add images to our site. Now we're going to make our first post. Um, so I'm going to interject a little bit here and talk about pages versus posts. Yeah. WordPress has two main content pieces uh, one is a page, and one is a post. And the easiest way to think about it is posts are more timely. Posts are smaller pieces of information that you publish on some type of regular basis, where a page is more static. Um, so if you're doing your own personal blog, you know, every time you write a, a, an article, that would be your blog post. 
but your pages might be your about page, you know, your contact page, um, you know, maybe a list of, you know, come and see where I'm going to be speaking next. In that case, you have three pages and a bunch of posts. Um, some newer themes and some um, other ways to build WordPress sites have some other content types, uh, usually called custom post types, which is way more advanced than today. But if you install a theme and you see, you know, pages, posts, and portfolio. A portfolio is a type of post that allows you to put different pieces of information in. Um, so what we're going to do now is show you how to create your very first post. Yes. So um, again, here on our dashboard, the top thing, so WordPress tried to create their dashboard menu in a way that had the most common things you're going to do closest to the top. So you're going to add posts, absolutely the most common thing you ever do. So it's right there on the top. And th just to take a look across the top as well, there's this black bar across here that also has very common um, actions. And this plus new allows you to drop down and create a new post or a new uh, media file or page or user, which I, I didn't think that they were that common. But, um, so you can either go by clicking on posts, add new, and I will we'll talk about this listing page later because I want to get we want to kind of drive into what is a post. Uh, so then we can click on the add post. Here, what's a good title for a post? Blogging for fun and blogging. Uh, we're going to skip over this permalink thing for the time being. We'll come back to that in a little bit because there's a lot of good juicy stuff there. But it's complicated and it's more complicated for posts than for pages and we'll talk about it on the pages. So, um, I am a blogger. I love to blog. My blog page is read by, well, maybe my mom. So I can, um, oh, and I will be taking a trip in, trip in a plane this weekend. So you can talk about things that are kind of evergreen. Um, and, um, you know, that will be valuable no matter what the context. Or you can talk about things that are very contemporary, like what's happening today. I'm taking a plane this weekend, so I know what plane, I, I have a picture of a plane. So I'm going to add media. So what I did is I, uh, I have the mouse right where I want that plane, so that the, the cursor is clicked at the end of that weekend uh, paragraph. I'm going to click the add media. Click the plane and insert into post. It's pretty easy. You can control some things about the media, the image by clicking on it. And you get this little menu. You can either uh, align it center, align it to the right. Um, you can align it to the left. There are lots of little things you can do with it, or no alignment, which forces it to just kind of follow along. If you click the pencil, the edit. This brings up um, a little bit more control over it. Um, you can add a caption. This goes in the alt text. So this is a picture of a plane. And we can make it bigger or smaller based on what our needs are for this particular image at this particular point in our blog. So I'm going to just leave it with this caption. And you'll notice that we get a little bit of this is a picture of a plane. It actually puts that caption right in line with the picture. Uh, and it also uh, moved it above my paragraph. Well, how about that? Um, I'm going to drag it back down. It doesn't want to go. Live demos are just so fun. Uh, let's do this. Let's put it center. No alignment. WordPress moved it above my paragraph. So, I'm, so if you've used any other editor, uh, Word or online or Google Docs or anything like that, you can highlight text. You can cut, copy and paste text like you normally can. I'm going to cut this text. I'm going to arrow up to the end, 
and I'm going to paste it in above the picture. It's, it's that simple. Um, a little word, word of warning. Uh, WordPress Editor does um, treat text better than images. So if you're going to move things around, it's probably better to move the text than the images. Um, and I will show you, I am going to show you one kind of behind the scenes advanced thing right now. Because this is um, can be important and it's pretty easy to figure out because uh, WordPress is, um, the way WordPress injects images into the page uh, has to have a very regular um, format. And I'm going to show you that format right now. Behind the scenes, or behind the curtain. So, notice this square bracket that has to that square bracket, it starts with the word caption, and then all the way at the end, I know it's a big ugly blog of text, blog of text. Can I make that bigger? You can't read that, can you? There, what's up? Up to this caption. This is the beginning and end of that whole picture thing with the caption. And then inside of that, is this IMG for image. This business is the actual airplane picture. So kind of, if you notice all of that in there, that's WordPress's way of saying, we're gonna put a picture in here and it's gonna have these characteristics and this caption. You never need to look at this. You can ignore everything I just said um, by living over in the visual editor rather than the text editor. And that's what these two buttons here do. They switch you between WordPress's internal way of looking at things and its visual way of looking at things. So if you are learning HTML, that code that you looked at yes. is HTML. Well, with the, yeah, a, the IMG tag is. Right. Um, with that, you know, class, WP, and that's right. WordPress specific, but that's still all general HTML, not the, um, not the short code for the caption. No. The caption, the, right. Right. The caption yeah. is called a short code. You will eventually run into WordPress shortcodes. We're not going to cover them today, but that's that, that's what you're looking at there. So, okay, we have our first. I'm going to bring this page back down to smaller size. If you can't read anything that I'm talking about, I'm like pointing at it, like you should be able to read it. Please say something so I make it bigger again. I, forget. I just I'm looking at it here. I think um, think about that. So there's a couple other things. Um, that you can do on this page. You can publish it right away, but what I recommend is after you make some progress, like every 15 minutes, no more, click this Save Draft button. It is your friend. It will save you from much sadness on days when like, you accidentally close your browser and go away from what you're working on and hit the back button, and what you've been working on for an hour is now sadly lost. Um, so save, save draft will leave your work as it currently stands saved in the, in the WordPress database for your for further editing. So you can leave this page now and safely have all the work you just did saved. Come back to it and finish it later. Or um, you can just keep working. Now, we can either publish this thing right away by clicking the big uh, happy blue publish button yeah, I moved it down by expanding it. So we can either publish this right away, or we can change the publish immediately to be sometime in the future. So you can write a dozen WordPress blog posts and queue them up for future days. So if you want to publish two, you want to go on vacation and you want two blog posts to come out every week, you can, you can write your 10, and then have one come out on Wednesday and one come out on Saturday um, by specifically scheduling each one. Um, there's more sophisticated ways of doing this with some plugins, but this is the by far the most straightforward way you can directly say exactly what day and time this post will go publish. Let me so, make one comment on that. Absolutely. If you're going to use that feature, make sure that the time is set correctly on your site. Yes, um, I did good. not do this a couple weeks ago. I intended a blog post to go live at 9 a.m. and I'm working on finishing it up at 8. And I typed in, you know, the date and the time, and I hit. I'm like, wait, that didn't work. And the time zone on the site isn't correct. Um, so it went live an hour earlier than we did. <laughs> that's, that's huge. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Luckily, that, this one wasn't a big deal. But if you are going to use the 
the schedule feature, just make sure your time zone is set correctly. And one way to check is that the uh, time in this last, edited by John, right up here, um, should be close to your current time, and you'll notice that this says 5.42 p.m. So the time zone on this machine is different than my, my time zone, right? So, so we're, even though I've showed you this, and, and please take Melinda's um, advice to heart if you uh, are going to use that. We are going to publish ours right away. Oh, um, don't want to talk about categories yet. Publicly a little bit. Yeah, it probably would hurt since you have it on the homepage. So, we categorize things all the time, you know. Some of our posts are news. There's news about what we're doing. Some some are rants, like uh, if you're a gossip columnist, you might be writing about uh, what someone's wearing. Um, so it could be the uh, you know the uh, runway uh, category of runway or something like that. I know there's somebody talking about fashion blogging later today. Right? That'll be fun. Right now. Oh, right now. Yeah. Oh, I'm missing it. Oh well. Can you give an example? No, sorry, go ahead. Oh, cool. No, you go ahead. <laughs> of course, you always watch the video of it later. I will yeah. do that, thank you. Uh, here's an example from the room, the taco blog that you're talking oh, about. Tacos. You, know, you might want to categorize it by, you know, if it's Pittsburgh, are you going to do, you know, one category for Ema City, another category for Ema County, and another category for Ema County, and you can do one category for Ema City, and you know, one for the northern suburbs, eastern, western. Um, you could also categorize them by, um, you know, cost. You know, is it, you know, the, the cheap taco truck? Is it the middle of the range? You know, it's a $1 sign, $2 sign. Um, so thinking about what kind of content you're going to have and how your readers may want to access that content. You've been to the taco trucks yet? No, we're going to the taco festival. Oh, oh right. festivals. October 7th. Yay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely, so I'm going to uncheck these. So this is going to go under festivals, right? Yeah. So, okay, and to a taco <laughs> festival. <laughs> nice. And we're going to publish it, and off it goes. Now, if I go over to my test site, or my preview site, and hit uh, home, we're just going to click on our banner, and it will take it home. And since our homepage is our blog, so it's going to start to show whatever our most recent blog posts are, it says, blogging for fun and profit on a blogger blog. I will be taking a trip in a plane this weekend to a taco festival. And you can see over here in the little box uh, to the left is the date it was published, the category that we published it in, festivals. Um, um, you can allow users to comment or not. This feature can be turned on and off. So uh, it's a heated debate in blogging right now of whether you should enable comments or not. Um, I'm not going to weigh in on that right now. Uh, but it also, notice that there's an edit there. Normal users will not see that edit. If you are logged in as a user that is allowed to edit blogs on your site, which you are because you just created it, you will get to see that um, edit button. So if I log out here, well, no, if I log out here, um, I don't want to do that. Because if I log out here, I'll log out my other session too. So never mind. Um, if I were in, had Firefox up, if I can see that. Just for, to show you. So I'm not logged in here, and you see that the edit's not there. So just a, a small thing. All right, back to, was there anything else on edit, create, post that we want to talk about? Tags, tags are like hashtags on Twitter or something. You can you can tag this with, with whatever vocabulary you want. Um, you can type them in, um, um, hard shell, and just press enter, soft shell, in case you want to go off topic, <laughs> uh, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, you can add in whatever that you want. Um, and each of these is now, if I update this, so I can edit this in any way I want. And if I update, 
those new tags will be added to the uh, block. So now I'm going to refresh, and you'll see that underneath the category here, make that a little bit bigger, and now they're underneath. There's the category, and now here are each of the um, tags that I just added to it. And you can search by tags. We can put us, remember there was a tag cloud. We can put a tag cloud on the side and people can kind of get a sense of what, what are the popular tags are on your site. There's a lot of different ways you can use those. So, and then here was the, like when you create a new WordPress site, you get a default post. Here it was created also today. It was uncategorized, which is, um, you, you want to deliberately choose your categories. Don't let things fall into uncategorized because it's, it's kind of not, it's kind of boring. Uh, and there's a comment. Ooh, let's look at the comment. Maybe. Maybe we'll look at the comment. Maybe it's thinking. Do the tags or yes. categories help with SEO at all? I think immensely, yes. It can, but I just heard something recently is don't go overboard with your tags. Right. Uh, do what makes sense. It's kind of, I think tagging has started to become like keyword stuff it used to be. So again, write first for humans, give what humans need, and then Google will find it from there. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's a wrap on posts. Oh. Well, while we're in here, we make one quick question or yeah, comment. Because it depends on what theme you're using, but this featured image box is if you're using a theme that's like uh, many corporate sites you may have seen, where you'll see, you know, here's a photo, here's the headline, here's the date, here's the little paragraph, and then click to read more. That image there is going to be your featured image. So if you're using a theme like that, you want to get in the habit of putting a featured image on every post. Let's do this. I'm going to make it very, very brief. Does this one look good? Yeah, that looks good. Right, so we'll just grab a meeting. Size one, download it, we're gonna go back here, we're going to and a comment that uh, Pizza Bay site that he just had up, that's a resource for free stock photos that you are free to, to download and use. Um, focus or um, Royalty free. Comments, free. Yeah, it's royalty free, uh, but sometimes some of them have different licenses, so they may want attribution. They may just want you to rec uh, acknowledge that you use their work. Most of them are not. Most of them are attribution free as well. Yeah, um, I use a lot of it. I do some. I use some commercial stock photo sites too. But um, what was uh, I downloaded that? I mean, downloads. Taco. Drag it up there. Set featured image and then save, and it should show up as a big picture above the um, Firefox. Refresh and blogging for fun. There's our featured image between the headline of the blog post and the text. And you can see how fast you can turn a boring text website into something that's got some real pop. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's like to track the to track like the traffic on your website. Do you have to install like a, a toolbar for? I, I mean, like a plugin for let's say Google Analytics. Absolutely. So so, yeah, so it won't track it for you. Not not automatically. So tracking your um, traffic onto, through, and then off of uh, your website is an important act business activity. And many modern themes have tracking, uh, have, have uh, Google Analytics um, capability built right in. I don't know if these default WordPress themes do, but there are plugins. Um, if you're going to stick around for Will's talk, maybe you've asked him about um, a Google Analytics plugin. He may have a real handy answer for you. Okay. But yeah, you would need a plugin. There, that would introduce a new menu item on your dashboard. You click on it, and then it will have a field where you paste in, or where you type in or paste in your Google Analytics ID. Um, I have uh, no, Firefox. Um, where are we on time? Oh my God, the oh, almost right. 
Yeah, I, I can't, I don't have time to talk about that more today. But, um, so, okay, so we're going to run to the next, which is page, 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 page. What's next, the create button? Oh, the published post. Oh, we already talked about this. We can skip this. Um, pages. Uh, the act of creating a page is very, very similar to creating a post. Um, some of those items in the sidebar are different, but you talked earlier about you know, what the page and what the post. So we're going to go ahead and show you making an about page. And um, want to talk a little bit about permalinks real quick while we have the slide up? Uh, yes. So permalinks, WordPress has different ways to display links. Uh, right out of the box, it displays it with a, a database entry, I guess it's called, what's the question mark? Um, it's not very human friendly, yeah. and really, I suggest not using it. In the WordPress setting, there's different permalink structures you can pick. Uh, this most affects your blog post. So some of them, you can put the date. So oftentimes, we'll see a blog post that will say, you know, your site name dot com slash 2016 slash you know August slash 13 slash headline name. Uh, so that's good if you're doing something that's very chronological focused, but you want to display the date. You can also use a post name. So what that does is take out that date. It has just the post name. Um, pages, the permalink for the pages, will either, if you leave it as default, it'll have that database call with the, the P number question mark, or if you change it to something else, it will have the, um, the headline. Yeah, actually, this is the default for pages. Oh, okay. So okay. You, yeah, no, that's okay. But you're you're absolutely right. Posts can have a, a very wide range um, variety of um, ways to have that represented. The pages. The nice thing about pages is you can control exactly what it is. So if you're creating a landing page for a sales uh, program, or you want um, you know to offer discount codes on tacos, you know you can say you know tacosforall.com slash discount, right? And you can advertise that. You can put it on business cards, billboards, whatever. It will always be there. That page will always be addressable by this permalink. That's why it's called permalink. It's permanent. And um, when, if you are careful about adjusting that, when you are you know, creating that, uh, you can have really good marketing um, collateral from that. Uh, so uh, I will... Uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to just move to the next slide, because creating a page is just like creating a post, <laughs> literally. It, you go through the same editor, the same process, the same publication uh, uh, information is all the same. You could categorize them, and you can tag them. Everything's the same, and since we're, like, literally a, a minute or two, I want to jump to the list, uh, working with the list. Uh, so you want to... So in the, the dashboard, you can access a list of your pages and your posts. And you'll see, this is a sample of the post, the pages look very similar. So at a glance, you can see when this is published. You can see how many comments you have, but this one has one. You can see that this has no tags. It's uncategorized. You can see who the author is, and you can see the headline. When you mouse over the headline, you see that the little links appear below it. The edit, the click edit, the track, and the view. So if you have something on your site that you need to get rid of, you can just go and hit track right from there, and it'll delete. You can hit edit, and that will take you into the edit menu where, where before you can do any kind of editing. Uh, view will open up and show you what looks like on the front end. So I think the one that we want to show you is the quick edit, and that's... Um, how you can just quickly change your category, change your tag, uh, change your public state without going into anything there. Yeah, and quick edit, and the other really powerful feature is bulk edit. So if you see the little bulk actions um, menu pull down up here, you can change that to, uh, we're almost done, uh, you can change that to quantit. Um, nice. We're um, almost done. The, uh, I'm going to switch back to the live site here and look at all posts. So you can notice as I hover over, I get that little menu. So quick edit lets me do a real quick, um, without going on to the post page, I can make a lot of changes about the information about the post. 
can change its categories, I can change um, the tags. Like, it's really not about soft shell types, so we're going to take that one out. Right. Um, I want to change it to have, look like it was published on the 12th. You know, I don't know whether that's ethical or not, but I can do that. Um, and I want to change it from festivals to toppers. Okay, so you can, you can do all those things. Do update, and those changes just happen, and they're live on the on the final site. Um, the other thing is bulk edit. I can select all my uh, select any combination of my posts. Go to bulk actions edit apply, and I get that same little quick edit uh, panel. But now anything I change applies to all the posts I had selected. So there's a lot, very quick way to change category. Say I want to change all my food truck um, category to you know mobile dining, you know for instance. So uh, lots of options there. Um, I think that kind of brings us to that. Uh, here's a slide for bulk edit, and I think that kind of brings us uh, to a close. Uh, good work with the announcement. If you're working on a WordPress site and you need help with, uh, I'm going to be around tomorrow in the afternoon. Uh, when we do WordPress conferences, we do something called Happiness Bar, where that, sorry, I'm going to call it all. <laughs> that can bring your laptop with your WordPress blog and actually log into it, and you can say, this isn't working, why isn't this working? And we can take a look at it together. Um, within reason, you know, we can't spend five hours on one site. But if you have questions or something you're stuck on or something you want to learn, um, tomorrow during the 1 o'clock and the 2 o'clock set in the afternoon, I'll be out in that open area, kind of where I can sit a couple computers while I'll um, find me how to find out. Like this. Great. Yeah. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm presenting at 10 tomorrow in one of the rooms on uh, rebooting through podcast if you've let it go dark, and because uh, I've done that recently in my first-hand experience. So thank you very much. Thank you.